Now the iPad is one of my most used devices. It's my daily driver for organization. And along the way, I've picked up 10 tips that have helped me with my productivity. And today I'm gonna to share those tips with you and maybe they can increase your productivity too. Now, before we get into the tips, I recently purchased the new M4 iPad Air. This is my first Air and I've been trying it out for a few weeks. Now you already know, with a new iPad comes a new case. And thanks to today's sponsor, I have a case for this iPad. ESR sent over the flip magnetic case for me to try out and this case has all of my must have features and then some. Not only does this case have a pencil holder on the charging side, it can also be used in multiple angles. So if you want to use your iPad for viewing or creating, this case has you covered. The case magnetically locks into place so it stays in the angle that you set and you don't have to worry about it slipping. The angle settings are perfect for both watching videos and comfortably writing on your iPad. The case magnetically locks into place. So once you set it and you're taking your notes, you don't have to worry about it slipping or moving. And y'all, this is the first iPad case I've had that offers a portrait view. For me, this is perfect for displaying my planner or other documents while I'm at my desk working. And the best part about it is this case is slim and sleek, making it easy to carry your iPad on the go and you get all of these features in your iPad case for an affordable price. This case is available in different iPad models and I might just get one of these for my iPad Pro 2. I will add the link in the description if you're interested in checking this case out for yourself. If you have a website that you frequently use, you can turn it into an app on your home screen. Just go to the website, select the share icon. In the drop down, select add to home screen. In the pop up, you can change the name and when you're done, select add. Now you have an app icon on your home screen to quickly access the website. Now, if you are on the web and you need to save the website, you can use Quick Notes to save the link. There are two ways that you can access Quick Notes. Use the share icon at the top right and select add Quick Note, or you can just swipe up from the bottom right to open a Quick Note. On the Quick Note, you will have the prompt to add the link to your note, making it easy to save the website for later. Now make sure your Quick Note option is turned on. To turn on the Quick Note, go to Settings, Multitask and Gestures, and make sure Swipe Finger from Corner is toggled on. And if you want to use your Apple Pencil, go to Apple Pencil, and under Pencil Gestures, make sure the bottom right corner is set to Quick Note. Now while you're here, you also want to make sure that the bottom left corner is set to Screenshot. Now you can swipe up and capture a screenshot. This is a great feature to use if you're doing research. You can take a screenshot of an article and then select the full page feature at the top. Now you have the whole article that you can use to highlight, make notations, and when you're done, you can share the article to someone or you can save it as a PDF to your files. Now there are a few Safari adjustments that have helped improve my productivity. One being Reader View. On supported websites, you can use the Reader View to show important text and photos. To turn it on, go to Safari, select the icon to the left of the search bar, and tap Show Reader. To turn off the reader, select the page icon to the left of the search toolbar. You can also hide distracting items in Safari from the web pages. Tap on the icon on the left of the search bar and select hide distracting items. Now just tap on the items that you want to remove from the web page and they will magically disappear. There are a few keyboard gestures that can be used on the iPad. On the built-in keyboard, you can pinch to switch to a floating keyboard. Now, if you've had trouble accessing the floating keyboard by pinching, you can also access the floating keyboard by holding on the keyboard symbol and selecting it from the pop-up menu. Now, when you hold down on the keyboard symbol on the iPad mini, there's another option here to split the keyboard. When you split the keyboard, it gives you a similar keyboard typing experience that you have on an iPhone. Another keyboard gesture is to hold down the space bar and it turns the space bar into a trackpad. Now, instead of using alternate keyboards to get to your alternate keys, you can swipe down on the key to select the alternate key. 
You can select multiple items on your iPad using two fingers dragging across the screen. This is helpful when you have a few reminders that you wanna check off at once, or if you're editing a list of notes in the Notes app. If you have a MacBook, you can use the handoff feature to make your iPad a second monitor. To use your iPad as a display for the MacBook, make sure that both devices are on the same iCloud account and that they're on the same Wi-Fi. Make sure that you have your Bluetooth turned on on both devices. On the iPad under settings, go to general and then airplay and handoff. Here you want to make sure handoff is toggled on. On the MacBook, go to system settings, then general, select airdrop and handoff. Make sure that allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices is toggled on. Now go to displays and select the plus button and in the drop down search for your iPad. This will extend your display to the iPad. The arrange feature gives you the option to change your iPad's position depending on which side of your MacBook you have it on. Now that you have your iPad set up as a display for your MacBook, you can quickly turn this feature on in your control panel by using the screen mirroring option. Just select your iPad to turn it on. The next tip I have is iCloud tabs, which allows you to share your current Safari tabs across all your devices. Just go to Safari and select the tabs icon on the top left and select iCloud tabs from the list. Now you can see a current list of tabs that you have open on your other devices. To turn this feature on, go to settings and select your name. Under your name on the right hand side, select iCloud. Under Save to iCloud, select See All and make sure Safari is toggled on. The multitasking features on your iPad help you get more work done in less time. The slide over feature allows you to have one app on top of another. And you can also use the split view feature where you can have two apps side by side, making it easier to research and take notes. Also, you can copy the information between the two apps. One of my favorite ways to use this feature is to drag and drop from one screen to another. Just make sure when you're dragging and dropping photos, you're using the internet and not dragging from the app to drop images. All right, that's all the tips I have for today. Hopefully you found these productivity tips as useful as I do. If you have any other tips that you would like to share, make sure to leave those in the comments. All right, y'all, till next time.